The other day I got this awesome little mini PC from droix.co.uk, the GMK Tech Nutbox 5. I might be doing some further videos on this thing soon, but while setting this up it reminded me of some things I wanted to share regarding Windows. Hello and welcome to RetroBreeze. Mini PCs, and particularly portable PCs like the Anbronic Win 600, Ioneo Air, and AYN Loki devices, are now becoming more and more popular. And as they do, Microsoft Windows is becoming more and more predatory. I need to take a breath for this one, and get ready for some kind of opinionated, well, opinions. <sighs> Microsoft Windows is a predatory operating system whose primary function is to reap your personal data down to your every keystroke, build an intimate personal profile of you, your family, and anyone else who uses the device, and sell your every secret to the highest bidder. Or rather, to any number of interested bidders at pretty much any price. With Windows 11, this problem is worse than ever, to the point where internet access and a Microsoft account are now totally mandatory for installing Windows. These arbitrary requirements really paint the picture for the true intentions behind this software. I have worked in IT and engineering for my entire career, more or less, and I have been deeply involved with the setup of Windows operating systems the entire time. So these thoughts don't come to me lightly. I've watched the evolution of this software from my first PC in 1995 with Windows 95, all the way up to today, where I have 100% removed Microsoft Windows from every device in my household. So yes, this is a very strong opinion I hold. So I've created a few tips here that I think that you should do every single time that you're setting up a Windows device. These should be the very first things you do, starting the very, very first time you ever power on your device. Number one, bypass the Microsoft account sign-in. You'll need a USB keyboard attached for this one. Power on your device without a network cable attached, then click through the installer. Don't bother changing any settings because we'll be going through this again very shortly. When you get to the Wi-Fi or network setup screen, do not connect to Wi-Fi or any other network. Instead, press Shift F10 on your keyboard to bring up a command prompt window. Type the following, OOBE backslash bypass NRO. Your device will reboot into the same setup wizard. And this time you can set your settings like the language and such. When you get to the Wi-Fi or network screen, there will be a button at the bottom that says, I don't have internet. Click continue with limited setup. By the way, Microsoft is lying to your face with this limited setup nonsense. Coldly lying to your face. They think you are dumb as their customer. Now you'll be taken to the local account setup screen. Set up your username and password and three security questions. Then click through all the rest of the installer, absolutely denying, of course, all the telemetry, ads, location, handwriting, and any other conniving, disturbing permissions they want for it. Finally, you'll reach your desktop. Now you might be aware that there's a different way to do this, where you enter a fake email and password in the account setup screen. That might be an easier way to do this setup, but I have no doubt that this workaround is gonna be removed at any possible moment, so I just didn't bother including it here. I think the command prompt method is much more reliable on the long term. Number two, set up a firewall. Okay, so now we've denied the sleazy initial advances, let's get to some network protection. You'll want to download a software called TinyWall. This is a very small whitelist-based firewall and doesn't have any notable effect on performance. It makes it so that nothing on your PC can make outbound connections without your express permission. It also stays out of your way, so it's not gonna be popping up every five seconds. You have two options. You can connect to the internet right away and download TinyWall, or from maximum security and my recommendation, you can download it on a different computer and copy the installer over with a USB stick or SD card. You can get the program from tinywall.pados.hu. Click the download button, open the file, and click through the installer. Once it's installed, you'll find that nothing on your PC will be able to connect to the internet. This is the whitelist nature of TinyWall. You'll need to whitelist any applications that you want to be able to connect to the internet. To do this, click the TinyWall icon in the taskbar, then you can choose to whitelist by executable, which means selecting a program, or exe file, by process, meaning selecting from a list of currently running processes, or by window, which means clicking on any open window. So to whitelist the Firefox browser here, I'll click whitelist by window, then click the open Firefox window. There, now it works. 
You can also change the mode to auto learn to whitelist any open or subsequently opened application. You may want to do this if whitelisting the window or process isn't enough to make the program work. Make sure you set it back to normal mode when you're done though. I know this seems inconvenient, but it's really worth it to keep fine control over your computer's internet connection. Honestly, convenience is how they get you with their telemetry and data collecting software. So we have to compromise a little bit on convenience, just a little bit, in order to protect ourselves. Now that you have TinyWall installed, you can activate your internet connection if you haven't done so already. Number three, debloat Windows garbage. Let's make a dent in some of the mountains of bloatware and other nasties that ship with Windows 11. Browse to github.com forward slash tiosta forward slash Windows 11 dblow, which I've put in the description box below. Click releases on the right and click the topmost zip file to download it. Extract the file, open the Windows 11 dblow folder, then right click launch.bat and click run as administrator. On the warning screen, click more info, then click run anyway. Eventually, this will open a menu of options. I recommend going through and clicking the following at minimum. Essential tweaks. Disable background apps. Disable Cortana. Seriously, Cortana is essentially useless to the end consumer and exists purely to collect your data and advertise the equally useless Bing search engine. Uninstall OneDrive. Uninstall Bloatware. Uninstall Edge. You can actually install Google Chrome from this menu if you don't have any other browser installed already. Now, I've heard that some people say that running scripts like these cause system instability, but I personally find that to not be true. I've been running dbloat scripts, even in corporate environments, for years with no issues whatsoever, and I really do recommend them. Doing so can even improve performance in some ways as well. If you really want some really, really fine-grained control over what Windows is and is not allowed to do, then I recommend downloading a software known as O and O Shut Up 10. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of options to change the way that Windows can and cannot steal your personal data. Oh, and it doesn't need to be installed either. All right, so those are the three main steps that I really want to cover. I truly believe you should do this if you're getting a new Windows device that has Windows 11 or even Windows 10 on it. But I wanted to also give you a couple of next steps. First of all, you can use an excellent program called Ninite to generate a quick and easy silent installer for all your favorite programs. Just go to ninite.com, check the boxes for all the programs you want, then click Get Your Ninite. Open the downloaded file and like magic, all of your favorite programs will be installed without any further input needed on your part. Next, consider a start menu replacement. Whether you're on Windows 10 or 11, the start menu has been broken for years and will never be fixed at this point. There are much better alternatives out there. My final step I know is a long shot, but I really say this to you in earnest. Give Linux a try. With the release of the Steam Deck and the progress of the Proton compatibility layer that makes Windows games work on Linux, Linux is now an excellent system for running basically all of your Windows games with very few exceptions. If your game library is entirely on Steam, then it's no more difficult to start gaming on Linux than it is on Windows. If you have games on Epic, GOG, or other places, you can still play those games too, although it might take a little bit more configuration. Even multiplayer games like Fall Guys work on Linux after just a little bit of extra setup. In my opinion, the time to make the switch is now. As Linux becomes truly viable for gaming, and as Windows becomes more and more a locked down, forced cloud data harvesting factory. Best of all, you can even try Linux without installing it. Or you can dual boot it with Windows if you still want to keep that as a backup. I really sincerely recommend giving Linux a try. I even argue that while Windows has the one up with familiarity, Linux distributions are far more user friendly and easy to use by quite a long shot. You just need to give it a try and give it some time and get used to the differences. Right now, I recommend Pop OS or Elementary OS for absolute beginners who may be less technically minded. Although, to be honest, I recommend everyone just jump right in with the Plasma version of Manjaro. You'll most likely be able to install Manjaro and be gaming from Steam in about 20 minutes. It really is excellent. Manjaro is also pretty close to Steam OS on the back end because they're both derived from Arch Linux. All right, one last thing from me here. If you are adamant about staying on Windows, I really recommend investigating the following. Revision OS, Phoenix Lite OS, and the broader teamOS.xyz releases. I'm not going to comment too much on these because sometimes they come with activators or other copyrighted software. However, in my experiences, these custom Windows releases serve the great purpose 
of making Windows a much more consumer-friendly experiences with small footprints, great performance, and none of that awful telemetry nonsense. Okay, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for listening to me rant here. This all is said in earnest. I know it might seem kind of crazy, like I'm a hilltop hermit shouting at the sun or something, but hey, it is what it is. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe. If you want to see more tutorials for Linux and stuff like that, please let me know in the comment box below. I kind of feel like I would really like to do that, actually. Anyway, this has been Shem from RetroBreeze, and I look forward to seeing you again when you're running Linux on your home PC very soon.